Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here in person and online here at Edgeboro Moravian Church on this third Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, welcome to Edgeboro, where we are a community dedicated to loving God, growing in Christ, and sharing the Holy Spirit with those around us. Uh, we must be in at least some period of, uh, of summer, maybe the relaxing period of summer, because I only have one announcement to share. Uh, and that is that the Ice Cream Festival planning meeting is taking place uh, this Thursday uh, at 7 o'clock at Paul and Blake Messman's house on Montgomery Street. You can find their address in the directory. Uh, all are welcome to attend. Uh, more people are still needed uh, for that uh, Ice Cream Festival leadership team. Uh, so if you can, please come, uh, and beforehand, uh, if you can, please contact Blake if you're able to attend. So that is my only announcement. I'm wondering if there are others that you might have uh, that uh, you want uh, Edgeboro to know about today. That's right, the ice cream festival. Yeah, Blake's a great baker, so just showing up for that. <laughs> So, so not putting uh, Blake on the hook for anything, but baking might be involved during that meeting if you need extra incentive. Thank you, Tom. Well, seeing no, no others, uh, we hope that you can join in on the ministry and fellowship that takes place uh, here. But now let us uh, turn to our worship service for today, which will be a little bit different, and I'll explain that in a few moments. But first, let us uh, focus ourselves on our scripture reading for today. Our scripture reading comes from Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. The fruit, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us, let us also be guided by the Spirit. There ends the reading. Please rise for our hymn, Spirit of Truth and Grace and Power, on page 99. So yes, today we're talking about the fruits and thinking about the fruits of the Spirit. It's a favorite set of verses for many. I'm sure many of you have heard them before. Uh, many Christians have memorized them, uh, uh, sometimes through prayer and liturgies, like our own liturgy for discipleship uh, that we prayed last week, uh, and sometimes through Sunday school lessons uh, that pair each fruit with a real fruit. You know, and love is usually a strawberry because strawberries look like hearts, and that seems to work out just fine. But these words from the Apostle Paul don't really come from a happy context from which we think. And they're not exactly, I guess, in the terms of a happy Sunday school lesson. Because they come to a, a church, a young church, a young church community in the heat of conflict. And if you really want to experience that heat of conflict, if you open your Bibles to Galatians 5 at some point today and look at verse 12, you will see that in virtually the same breath, literally 10 verses right before the fruits of the Spirit, Paul has some 
let's say, choice words for his opposition that might be honestly too graphic to say in church, even though it's in the Bible. Like, this is where this conflict is right now. The conflict was essentially about what this new church community would do as a new community to make themselves unique and stand out. They were searching for what would define them, essentially. So some said that they should go back to following Jewish law. Others said that they should be circumcised, and that's kind of where those words from verse 12 kind of go off the rails a little bit. I won't say more. Um, Paul said no to both of these ideas, that no, these are not the things that will define you, and instead gave them a list, the list that we read today, the fruits of the Spirit. And that is what should define them as a community. So I wanted to try something new in worship today along the same line and along the same line of, of list and the power that list can have for our faith. Now, before I say a few more things about lists, I do want to acknowledge and just kind of name maybe what we're feeling in the room as we come here today, that I had these ideas before current events of this week. I had this all planned out before Roe v. Wade on Friday. And I simply just want to name that now because it's something that it's just been on a whole lot of people's minds, even those in this room and those watching us online today. The conversations around abortion bring up so much for so many, and I simply just want to say that I feel the gravity of this too, and you are most certainly in my prayers as we navigate this together. So no, I didn't plan this worship service uh, with politics in mind, but as we remember, the root word of politics is the affairs of the state or city or community. And as we remember that this list of fruits was given to a community in conflict, to learning to function together and literally getting their politics together, maybe there's something timely about us looking at the fruits of the Spirit today. So in this letter, Paul gives this young church a list to help them define themselves and define the Holy Spirit. Clearly, we can see that it's a list that they need to hear, and so we get a sense of where they are in the midst of their community forming, or rather community storming at this point. Now, lists are all over Scripture. They, they're, they're, they're genealogy lists for the reader to know who characters are and how they're connected to the history of Scripture. There are lists of commandments, right, the Ten Commandments in particular, but other lists of commandments too, for us that, that tell us how communities, both past and present, have operated. So lists can tell us a lot about people, a lot about how we relate with one another, and a lot about our faith. Now, I know it's not the same category as the Ten Commandments, but just to go further with that point, if you were to look at a list, a, bunch, a collection of, say, my shopping list, for example, you'll probably get to know my favorite foods really quickly, and junk foods at that. If you look at my to-do list, which I keep a big journal of in my office, you'll get a sense of what pastors do on every other day of the week that's not Sunday. And yes, we do work on other days of the week. You'll also see plenty of my world sports there, too. Here at Edgeboro, we have a whole bunch of lists. We have lists of who was baptized, who joined, who was married, who died, who we're praying for. Our liturgies are literally just lists of different prayers. So we use all these things to track our activity, uh, our activity of this community over the years. Physical activity, but also spiritual activity, too. So lists can communicate some really important things about people and about our faith. And my hope is that lists can do the same for us today as we create new lists here. So what we're going to do, and we're going to head into our first, uh, I guess, list making here now. Yes, we're going to do something a little bit new here today, as I said before. You'll see in your bulletins a yellow insert. For those online, you'll just have to scroll down a bit. It's still white there. Uh, we, what I want to do is you'll see on that insert there are three different props for lists. So if you get that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you five minutes to create this list. To, to create it, if you want to share with someone next to you, you can. If you need other ideas, go ahead. Conversing is absolutely allowed in this exercise. 
And at the end of those five minutes, I'd invite any one of us, I'll come around with a microphone and, and just share maybe an item from our list. And hopefully we can kind of learn a little bit about each other there. So I'm hoping that while doing this, and we'll kind of do this three times, we'll do like five minutes of writing and then about five minutes of sharing if you'd like. I'm not gonna you know, pressure anybody like a teacher. <laughs> what do you think about this? Um, but I'm hoping that while doing this, we learn something about ourselves. We learn about each other as we build community together. Uh, we become grateful for the things that we don't think about on a daily basis. And we actually experience a few of the fruits of the Spirit today. So I'm hoping that this is a joyful experience for us all. So if anyone needs a writing utensil, let me know. I have a bunch up here. But I'm going to start the clock pretty soon, but I wanted to introduce this uh, list here. These prompts are not my own. I have a book called Listography, and it's a spiritual edition in my office. And there's a whole bunch of lists. It's more of a journaling exercise. It's meant to be prayerful. Uh, and so th these are where these, these prompts come from. So I want you to take five minutes and look at list number one. And if it's a rough list, that's okay. And if you don't get it all, that's fine too. I'm only giving you a couple minutes. So if you would list stories that inspire you. Now these stories could be fictional or nonfiction. They could be personal, like someone from your family. They could be, you know, TV, movie, books. Stories that inspire you. I want you to think of that list, and I'm going to start the clock because I'm really going to keep us to five minutes here, otherwise we might be listing all day. So go ahead, start your list, you need a writing utensil, let me know, and if you'd like to talk with other people around you, share what you have, get some ideas, you're more than welcome to do that too. Stories that inspire you.
That was five minutes, by the way. I don't know if it felt like five minutes or if it felt like a minute or 30 minutes, depending on your perspective. Um, stories that inspire me. I would love to hear maybe, you don't have to tell the story, but I would love to, to hear maybe some of the stories or a story that you find inspirational and maybe a little bit about why, uh, if, you, uh, if you care to, uh, to explain a little bit. So I'm also going to keep this part in five minutes because we could be sharing all day long too. So I'm heading back to Carol here. Yeah, this is for the folks at home too, so. I'm not much of a movie person or anything like that, but my all-time favorite is Forrest Gump. Because of all his divert, you know, what he had to go through, his struggles, he achieved great things. And I always remember, life is a box of chocolates. And that's when I have a tough day, I tell myself, Carol, life's a box of chocolates, get in for it. You know, so that's why Forrest Gump is always my all-time favorite. You don't want to know my books. I, want <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm a little jealous why I, that I did not come up with that myself. So anyway. Thank you, Kara. Anybody else? I have found the stories of Narnia that C.S. Lewis wrote because they were a big part of my childhood and it really formed a lot of my theology comes from the, from the books of Narnia. My dad used to read them to us every year we would go on holiday camping, and he used to read us one book a year, one chapter a night when we were on holiday. So I, that's like, I remember that. And the one time we were at a campsite, and when we were packing up to move, the kids in the tent next door were upset because they were like, we've been listening to that story. <laughs> <laughs> so That's fantastic. Again, yeah, see, in five minutes, I can't get all the stories. I'm like, yeah, that would have been a good one for my list, too. Absolutely. Anyone else? Stories that inspire you? What's your story? I got a couple. Oh. Um, I'll, I will just say, as far, I mean, and a lot of them are not from the Bible, but I'll just say I did have Peter and his whole story arc I find fascinating. But I've been into baseball stories quite a bit lately. And I'm reading this book called The Baseball 100, which just gives a brief kind of six-page biography of, of this player and why they were the greatest player of all time. So uh, different stories, especially like Jackie Robinson, uh, just are really, I, I just find really, right now, in the thick of the baseball season, that was kind of one that came to the top of my list. But, um, you know, of course, like Harry Potter and Encanto were up there, too, just because they were on my mind. So in any case. Any other stories that anyone would like to share? Well, hopefully plenty of thought. Uh, if, hopefully with these exercises, since I'm not a great journaler at all, this is one way to kind of get me into that and get me into that thinking. So we'll have two more chances to do that, but uh, uh, we'll move on then to, uh, to some of our other elements of worship here today. Um, so right now, let us move into a time of offering. Uh, as we think about the fruits and the gifts that we have already been given, uh, we think about what we can offer and give back at this time. So let us enter into a time of offering.
Father, what a blessing it is to give and receive, to share and support this church, where love, justice, and equality inspire our acts of service and compassion. We dedicate these gifts to all that we stand for as a community of faith. Amen. Please be seated. And we come now to list number two. Good choices I've made. I hope in five minutes we can come up with a lot of good choices that we've made. Good choices I've made.
Okay. So what were your good choices? And what, and if you can, say, what made them good? Mr. Henry's back here. I put my hand up so I knew he'd get his exercise walker going. <laughs> I'm not wearing my Fitbit right now either. That's too bad. When uh, he gave me this list, I, I couldn't help but think, it said good choices I've made, and I had to add, with the help of God, on that line. Because I think choices that we would make without the help of God might not be as good as the one he got us. Uh, my first one, of course, and most of you know the better half of this is my marriage. <coughs> The second one is my career choices. Uh, when I started out, I wanted nothing but to have my own garage and service station combination, and all of a sudden, about three years later, I was asked to become a teacher of automotive. I had not started college or anything yet at that time. So I was 28 years old when I started college. But that was one of the best choices I ever made. And two of the other ones that I just couldn't help but put down here is being involved with the church, this church, and the board participation, and many other things that we did along the line. I was trying to figure out here, I think in the total years that I've been here, I was on the board a total of 31 years. Uh, all, <coughs> excuse me, all together. Then the last one I put down, which is very meaningful for me, is teaching the sons. We don't have as many people there as we'd like, but we have a wonderful group and talk about God and the Bible and His Word constantly. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for sharing your good choices. What other good choices are here? Tom's got some. Uh, I'll echo Bill on the first one that married my beautiful wife. She certainly has kept me grounded. Thank you, Lord. Um, the second one, and it's not a plug, but the ice cream festival. <laughs> okay. I found this church through the ice cream festival, uh, and it's been a, a blessing to me ever since. Thank you, Tom. Other good choice, good choice is coming to you, Nancy. Briefly, I would say life including including God in it. Uh, marriage, which was wonderful. Raising children. I remained in the Bethlehem area by choice. I really wanted to go somewhere, but my children were already in friendships and so forth and I didn't want to tear them apart. Uh, the real choice was uh, continuing and going back to the nursing field, uh, especially in the hospice care, which is where you give the most of your stuff. And getting back to list one, I have two personal angel stories to tell, if anyone's ever willing to listen. Mm. They are fabulous. Thank you, Nancy. I might be asking about your stories later, although I might know, anyway, I'm curious still. Any other good choices? Coming back to Carol, Carol's like, oh, what the heck, I got something to share, right? <laughs> I'm not going to be quiet. <laughs> My first most important one is just being a member of this church. I'm baptized here all the way through, come and gone, back and forth, but this is still home, always been home to me, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but also, um, 
with my husband being retired, I'm being retired. I'm very active in boards and community services and, and committees, and that helped me not to kill my husband. <laughs> uh, to get him out of the house and be involved in, in things that I enjoy uh, outside of the church. I mean, the church is one thing, but you need something else, and, uh, and I can combine the two. So I think those are my important gifts, besides having two kids. And they're off my dime, which is even better. <laughs> so good choices made by them, too, yeah. <laughs> Last call for good choices. There's nothing, uh, by the way, there's nothing preventing you from uh, sharing your good choices or good stories later on, too, so. Why don't we move along to list number three then? This is, I'm really interested to hear the collective wisdom of the room with this list. What I would tell my teenage self. Keep in mind we have some that are teenagers or about to be teenagers, so this is really important advice for them. So let's take five minutes, what I would tell my teenage self.
Okay, well, our final list. What I would tell my teenage self. It is okay to be an introvert. It's okay to be an introvert. Absolutely, it is. So. Okay, you can share three. That's fine. <laughs> Do not let other people's negative thoughts, opinions, or ideas affect you. Listen first, then speak. Travel, travel, travel anytime you can. Becoming a Moravian, marrying my husband Harry, and having my four children. Absolutely. So that sounds like list. Which list was that? List good. Yeah, those sounded like good choices to me. That's what I figured it was. Absolutely. Do you have any? Do you have any advice that you'd like to share? Tell my teenage self. Yeah. Have faith and relax. There it is. Excellent choices, excellent advice. I saw another hand, okay. Once again, I wanted him to get his exercise. <laughs> <laughs> what I was thinking of here, I think most of you know I'm no longer a teenager, but at any rate, follow God's lead in everything you do. The second one is live life to the fullest. The third one is do not waste one minute. Thank you, sir. There you go. <laughs> this one's a little tough. I remember when I was a teenager. My dad's been gone 50 years. And he died the day before my 15th birthday. So my plea is to the young kids in the church, cherish your parents as much as possible every day. Because they could be gone tomorrow. And I look back and people, my, my kids say to me, what memory do you have of your dad? What's his favorite meal? And I'm going, I really don't know. He was gone so early that I miss him dearly, and it, like I said, it's been 50 years, which is, I give my mom a lot of credit for putting up with a 15 and a 17-year-old um, through all our life spans. But my plea is to all the young kids, please cherish your parents, because you never know when they're going to be taken from you. Thank you. I think, uh, when I think back on my teenage life, I would tell myself that things don't happen to you. They happen for you to learn a lesson or because of you, because you made a choice. You know, I, when you're a teenager, you think everything is happening to you and life is ending and, you know, everything is just chaotic, but it doesn't happen to you. It happens for you to learn a lesson or it's part of your life journey. And didn't, I didn't learn that until I was an adult and could reflect back and realize that that's that it happened for me for a reason. Uh, first one I would say, stay focused. Don't get distracted by this ever evolving, changing cultural world we live in. Finish the race strong. Stay to the truth of the Lord. The second is, uh, don't pick up that first drink. Don't pick it up, because you just don't know. You don't want to go down that path. You don't, you, you don't want to be there. Thank you, Tom. Come to Ron. Two points. Be a skeptic and never give up. <laughs> For what it's worth, since Carol asked the first time and I realized I didn't share from my list two, I'll be brief with these. Um, good choices I've made. There's, there's a bunch ranging from seminary and everything involved in that, including questioning my undergrad degree and leaving teaching, 
and going to internships and then moving halfway across the country and getting to where I am today. All a bunch of good choices there. Um, I'm thankful for that. But of course, you know, I did include like the other two gentlemen, wife and family. Uh, and then of course in the same list is, you know, buying my guitar and choosing brownie batter and cookie dough ice cream because that's always a good choice. So, I mean, I just, you know, I just, I just put everything there. Um, as far as what I would tell my teenage self, I've, I've got quite a bit here too. Um, I guess just two things. One, uh, I, I did, I did pretty well in school, uh, but uh, I, I will say, you know, keep the knowledge that you can keep and don't be hard on yourself for not remembering everything because you definitely won't remember everything. Um, make plans, hold on to them loosely. Uh, and I think one that I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, but I think it's true that adults might be just as nervous to talk to you as you might be to talk to them. Um, but there are plenty of adults, especially here, who would really love that conversation if you can get over, you know, I don't know what it is, your introvertedness or even your social awkwardness or not knowing what to do. Adults might be just as nervous to talk to you as you might be to talk to them. Uh, and I think that just lowers a lot of boundaries from the get-go. So thank you so much for sharing some of uh, your wisdom, some of uh, your choices, or so how, you know, how you got to where you are now. Uh, thank you for just letting us in on a little bit of what makes you, you, and, and letting these lists do uh, something holy, and making community, and hopefully bringing about some of the fruits of the Spirit in our midst. Uh, as we uh, kind of close out things here during worship today, uh, we still have uh, just a, a general time for prayer and then our hymn and then finally our closing prayer, which is on the back side of the yellow uh, that you were just writing on, uh, will serve as our benediction for today. We'll get to that in a little bit, but first, uh, congregational prayers. Uh, let us continue to keep Kay Garropy and Helene Boyle uh, in prayer as they're going through uh, uh, some physical healing, as well as just other, I guess, situational complications that go along with that and logistics. Uh, we also continue our prayers for Sharon Bond, uh, who uh, was able to share with me that her radiation isotope therapy for her thyroid went really, uh, went really well from the standpoint that she suffered no ill effects from it. Uh, she's out of her isolation tomorrow with the hope that this is the kind of the last major step in dealing with everything her thyroid has, uh, you know, has given her over the last year plus. And uh, she thanks everyone for their ongoing prayers. Uh, and uh, lastly then, we also give thanks uh, to Johanna Heft, who's been up here the whole time. I know we haven't been singing much today, but thank you, Johanna, uh, filling in for Gail over the last two weeks and providing your worship and music leadership here. Are there any other uh, prayer joys or concerns? that you have today. How might we pray for you? Kill that. Just prayers for safe travel for our daughter, Ilana, who will be coming home from a five-week trip to New York. She comes home Tuesday. All right. Prayers for your daughter, Alana. Safe travels back from Europe this week. I see. Prayers for our daughter, Shalom, and her husband, Ken, and they're headed to Europe. <laughs> Ken and Shalom and their safe travels to Europe and also just mental health and as we talk about advice to teenagers spurring on that thought of uh, those that are taking care uh, of, of others with mental health and, and including teenagers and the shortage of therapists and we'll certainly keep that in mind and try to discern our role as a church and care and community in that. And I would include teachers in that because teachers have to be therapists now because there aren't any therapists. So just something to be aware of as well if you have kids in school that your teachers are also very strict. Yep, absolutely. 
Yes, Carol. <laughs> Sounds good. Safe travels for Gail coming back home from Florida. With all that in mind, let us come to our God in prayer. Gracious Savior, we give you thanks uh, for this opportunity to gather together today. It was you who invited us to come and follow, and you who brought us together. Uh, so we give you thanks uh, for this, uh, this worshiping community that many of, many of us gathered here and online uh, call our spiritual home. Uh, we thank you for uh, the, the things that define us as a spiritual community. I know not so much the things that we have, uh, but it's rather the things that we do through the guidance of, of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you that it is things like the fruits of the Spirit that define who we are. Uh, Lord, we are mindful that, uh, that there are many of us uh, here uh, who either are in need of uh, physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional uh, healing or might be uh, in, the, uh, in a helping role or a supporting role or a prayerful role of someone else going through the healing process. We give you thanks uh, for the, uh, the comfort of your spirit. And we give you thanks that, that even when we don't have uh, words to say in, in difficult moments, uh, we, we, we thank you that, that you can, can intercede without, without our words. And we hope that even the, the ministry of our presence is enough. Uh, we thank you for uh, the joys that, that we celebrate. And particularly today, we thank you for the good choices that we have reflected upon. Uh, we thank you for the stories that have inspired us to be who we are today. Uh, and uh, we, we give you thanks uh, for the, the wisdom that we've learned along the way that uh, generations can pass down to generations. Uh, we know, Lord, as a church, that this is uh, one of uh, perhaps few environments that, uh, uh, that generations come together in love to, uh, to learn from one another, uh, to, to grow with each other and support one another. And so we thank you for the unique opportunity that uh, your body, the church, can bring to many of many generations. Uh, Lord, we come to you with uh, many prayers on our hearts and minds, but we trust that you have heard the ones that have been spoken uh, in this room today. Uh, hear us now, Lord, as we take another moment to perhaps create a, a mental list and trust it to you of all the, the prayer joys and concerns that we have, that we have not yet spoken, but we wish to entrust to you. So. Uh, may we take a moment to pause and do just that. Bless us and comfort us, gracious God, creator Savior and Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, we come back to the theme of the day, the, the fruits of the Spirit, and that Spirit-filled list that we reflected on before. We continue uh, to, I guess, worship and close out our worship today, hoping that it is Spirit-filled, and that's what we sing about now. So let us stand and sing him 494.
please join me in our closing prayer that we'll find in the, in the bulletin. Come, Holy Spirit. Us. Come, Holy Breath. Us. Come, Holy Wind. Us. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. We are led by other impulses. We become slaves again, and our ways of being are guided by fear. We are guided by prejudice. Fill us with love. We are guided by pessimism. Fill us with joy. We are guided by misunderstanding. Fill us with peace. We are guided by superficial quick fixes. Fill us with patience. We are guided by self-interest. Fill us with kindness. We are guided by apathy. Fill us with goodness. We are guided by convenience. Fill us with faithfulness. We are guided by complacency. Fill us with meekness. We are guided by temptation. Fill us with self-control. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Come, Holy Breath, live in us. Come, Holy Wind, move through us. Amen. Companions in the Spirit, may you go in peace.